Well, good morning, Jefferson County. Uh, the folks from the endowment and some of the speakers are from what my friends in Maine call away. That means anybody that didn't grow up there, you're always from away. There was a movie that was produced in 1991 that's had a big impact on how we think about the project that we're talking about here today in Jefferson County. It was called City Slickers. Any of you see that one? City Slickers? In the movie, there were three guys that uh, were living in an urban area and they were sort of beginning to go through middle age crisis and they decided to go out to the west to a dude ranch to find themselves. The, uh, the lead actor from the city was Billy Crystal. He, his character was Mitch. And the old grizzled cowboy that they were working with was Jack Palance. His name was Curly. Well, as they're going through the movie and they're having all the bumps you would expect between urbanites and, and uh, cowboys, Curly finally told Mitch, he said, you just got to get the one thing right. And he held up his finger and just said, get the one thing. And Billy said, well, what's the one thing? Is it your finger? He said, no, the one thing. And he said, well, how do I know what the one thing is? He said, that's for you to figure out. And so for the rest of the movie, Billy's trying to figure out what the one thing is. And we've used that theme of what we call the Curly strategy to talk about the work that Community Wealth Through Forestry is doing with the citizens of Jefferson County about the potential of the project that I'm going to do a very quick overview of in a moment. Before I get into that, I do want to thank the folks. Y'all have made us feel so welcome. I'm from Mississippi originally. I know Southern hospitality. I now live in South Carolina, but when I come down to Jefferson County, I feel right at home. Lil at the Chamber, Tom Jordan at the Development Authority have been so gracious to us. Having Dennis and Molly on our board with us is just phenomenal. The, the commitment they bring and the caring they uh, invest in this county and the children and the families in the future. Um, Charlie Brown in NAACP, Mayor Baker and Sally down in Wadley. I could go on down the list. We've met so many fine people over the last couple of years that have made us feel welcome. Your county commissioners have been extremely cooperative in trying to work with us. Uh, Chester at Family Connection. Communities are made up of people that care about each other and want to see that those that come behind them have at least as many opportunities as they did for a future. Those of us from the endowment team, uh, Lil mentioned some of them, but I want you to see who they are real quickly. First, uh, Peter Stangl, who happens to live over in Aiken, South Carolina. Peter's the little bitty guy back here in the back. Uh, Signe Can. Signe is way back over here. Signe's brand new with the endowment. She's our chief financial officer. <clears throat> Sophie Delgado Perisquia, who has been with us from Mexico for uh, a year and will be leaving us in a couple of weeks. If anybody knows of people in Tallahassee, Florida, she's moving to Tallahassee and we need a job for Sophie. <laughs> Sophie's done a lot of the work on background of data collection in Jefferson County and just out done outstanding work. You've already heard about Flo, Florence Colby. Florence has worked with Judy here. She is our meeting planner connoisseur and uh, makes sure that uh, everything goes on time. She's who we call Sergeant Flo. Judy Jones is our adopted team member, one of your own, who is our liaison here for community wealth through forestry in the community. And then Alan McGregor, who is our vice president, lives up in Asheville. Alan has the responsibility of the community aspects of the program. He's in the county a lot more now than I am. Early on, uh, Lil got to see too much of me and she said, isn't it time you sent somebody else in? So Alan is now who she gets to see. We're a small team. We have everybody here from the U.S. Endowment today. We're a national organization working in all 50 states and every one of us are in Jefferson County today. And that in part talks about our commitment to this particular project. The project is about something that uh, is very different. It's about bringing together public and private interests in a way that align not only to create the traditional outcomes of business, which are jobs and the purchases that go with uh, a, a manufacturing facility, but it's also to create a, a stream of income from that that flows back into the community to help do that curly strategy. What's the one thing that if we had funds over a 20-year period, which is unheard of in society, over a 20-year period, what could you do, not what could the endowment do, what could you, the people of Jefferson County, do to make a brighter future for those that come behind you? Your county is a rich county in many ways. 
We cross the Jefferson County line coming in this morning. First thing we see are trees. Anywhere we go in Jefferson County, we see trees because over 75% of your land base is covered in forest. That is one of your strongest economic asset bases as well as the quality of life for you. The community has been hard hit by the recession like so much of rural America, yet the spirit of the people and what I see when I come into facilities like this, Molly, this is, this is a facility that would be envied anywhere else in the country. You're blessed in so many ways, but they're challenges. And the challenges are ones that if we work together, we can address. What we have is a dream to create a national model right here in Jefferson County of bringing together a business and a plan for social and economic development. There's nothing else like it anywhere. Out of 3,000 counties in America, this is the one we picked, and we picked it for a number of reasons I won't go into this morning. The U.S. Endowment is the largest nonprofit in America working on issues related to forestry. We have two purposes. Number one, we love forests. We want to see forests stay as forests. We think they're critical to the future of this country for many reasons, not just for the jobs and the wonderful products, the lumber and the paper that flow from them. Two-thirds of every Everybody in America get their drinking water from a forest every day. Wildlife habitat, recreation, the chance to go recreate when you're worn down by just walking through the woods. The second thing we want though is the economic opportunities that go with those forests for people to climb the economic ladder. So family supporting jobs is the second part of our mission. We have envisioned something that would be proven out here of bringing together a business, which happens in this case to be a wood to energy facility, modest scale, and a commitment whereby the portion that the endowment is sponsoring, all of the earnings from that would flow back into this community over the lifetime of the power purchase agreement with Georgia Power, which is 20 years. We have put more of our investments in this one project in this one county than anything else we've done anywhere in America. That's how deeply we're committed. We've had challenges. We still have challenges. We've had opposition. There's opposition to everything. Motherhood, it doesn't matter. There's always somebody that's not aligned, and that's fine. We're going to get there. When we get there, we're going to see several things. Number one, we're going to see 50 to 75 families in Jefferson County that have family supporting incomes. And we heard early on, why, why, are we, why do we care about that small number of jobs? And we did some little math. If you heard on the evening news that there was a company coming into Metro Atlanta that was bringing 30,000 jobs, would that be news? 30,000 jobs? 75 jobs in Jefferson County is the equivalent of 30,000 jobs from its standpoint of its impact in this community. Small business makes an enormous difference in rural America. We need those businesses. Those families will benefit. They will pay taxes. They'll go to the stores and buy goods. They'll have more opportunity to support their children in activities in the school system and hopefully move those children from what we see as the increasing graduation rate that under uh, Superintendent Howard's leadership, you're, you're graduating more children. We need those children to go on to college because the jobs of tomorrow are gonna require more education. We know though that we can't be all things to all people. And one of the dangers is, is squandering one big opportunity and wanting to try to do everything. And that's why the one thing we keep saying to Lil, is the one thing we keep saying to the listening committee, it's the one thing we keep saying to the Community Wealth Board is, what's the one thing? Because if we try to do lots of little things, we'll accomplish nothing. One of the things we're, we've told folks as we've been talking around, and, and Judy has been into almost every church, club, and other in the county talking to folks, and we've got a listening committee of 13 people, many of them here in the room that are going as part of those sessions. We've said, this is about you. What's your vision for this county and its people in the years ahead? We've also said this isn't about a gift. There could be as much as $10 million or more that flow out of this project. We expect the people in this county to step up and match that because that's what this is about. And we're gonna be talking about some ideas, some concepts that could be the way to do that. We've had challenges. We've doubled down to address them. 
We've had opposition. It's always going to be there. It's part of the America we live in, the freedom to oppose and speak out. We believe that this national model, just like your superintendent was once national principal, not national high school principal of the year, we believe in a few years people are going to be coming in here saying, how did you do that? How did you pull together a private business and a national philanthropy and invest in a community in this way and get the people engaged in designing where it's going to go? We believe that's what you'll see coming out of this. There are a lot of possibilities. We want everybody's opinion. We want everybody's input. Everybody can't get their way, but there will be an emerging consensus toward that one thing. So we're excited to be here with you today. We're, we're always open to your input. We have not only Judy, but 13 other people that are assigned and have volunteered to hear your input, and we're ready to take that to help you form something that helps make this a, a brighter, better, more robust place for the future. So thank you for letting us be here with you this morning. Yeah.